Hello everyone, it's I, uh, Wacky Anime Odef here, here to present you with What If Deku Had a Yandere Quirk Part 5? Let's get into it. Currently, Bakugo Katsuki is in testing area B. He's looking in front of the cold gates that are closed right now, the steel gates that are closed. He immediately is walking closer towards the gates just to get a head start. He looks, he looks around and sees that his competition isn't much. Until he hears someone appear behind him, whisper into his ear and says, Wanna smash? And Bakugo realizes he's still in his dress, so he just says, Uh, I'm a guy, you know. And immediately the guy whispers closer into his ear and says, I know. And immediately Bakugo in his head just has sirens going off. And they're like, Oh, fuck! Is what all the Bakugos in his head are just saying. While Bakugo in his, lo in his actual... In the actual real life, is just like, oh fuck! And immediately, the guy beside him says, "That's what I'm trying to do." While Bakugo is starting to run, being chased by this man who is currently in a, like a clown outfit, and immediately Bakugo says, "Do you e are you even applying to be a hero?" And he's like, "No, not really." And he says, why are you here? And he's like, I'm here for the booty. While he immediately says, why? This is the UA. This is for heroes, not for pedophiles. And he says, you know, booty is more important than water. And immediately he says, oh, no. Help. Help. And then literally the person who's starting his test is Aizawa, and he's just, like, in the actual <laughs> sleeping bag. Like, he completely forgot that he had to do the testing. So, they're, like, an hour late. <laughs> POV change. Currently, Izuku Midoriya is looking around and seeing Celestia Lunenberg is still beside him, and he's thinking, oh, hmm, how do I get her away from me? Oh, I know. Hey, how about this? Let's do a little bet. While Celestia Lindenberg has like fucking stars in her red eyes while staring at him, says, A bet? Bet for what? And immediately Izuka says, How about this? You'll leave me alone. If you can leave me alone and get more actual robot points, you know, more points than I can, then you'll have to leave me alone. Or at least, you know, like chill out a little bit and like separate from me occasionally and not not cling to my arm like you're doing right now and immediately she's like i don't have any idea what you're doing what you're saying while she's clinging to his left arm and he says so do you agree to the bet while well, she says what do i get and he says what do you want and immediately she just creepily smiles and says how about uh we get a little closer if i won if I win, you go, down, go out on a date with me. Izuku immediately says, yes, all right, fine. But I know I'm going to win. <laughs> and she immediately says, I like that confidence. I'm going to crush that confidence. Immediately, Izuku's like, yeah, good luck with that. And he walk, tries to walk away before she kisses him on the left cheek and boops his nose. POV change. Kurumi is in the middle of the... Uh, observation room with the teachers which they're wondering how the fuck she got in here but then they see a dark aura radiating over her while she looks and sees that izuku got kissed and booped she immediately screams out that's my my person to boop and immediately all might appears beside her puts his hand like on her left side and says hey you know you car kind of clingy to him you you could tone that down a little bit and then she looks behind him and says do you want some more of what you had in therapy don't make me get the high heels out immediately all might starts doing a girly scream and starts running out <laughs> while midnight and everyone else is like what did you do to this man what did you do to all might and he's like well i cracked his plus ultra with a high heels and immediately Midnight just looks at him, looks at her, and snaps her fingers and says, Nice! While everyone else is looking at her like, What the fuck? While Midnight says, I'm a dominatrix. 
I'm into that shit. While Kermit just says, you won't be into what I'm about to do if none of you move her to class B. While immediately they're like, no, I I don't know if she's going to be in class 1A or class 1B. You don't know that, Kurumi, is what Nazu tries to say to like move her down. But she looks at him and says, if she's in class 1A, let me just tell you, I know some certain countries that like to fry rats. So you're going to get cooked or you're going to get fucked up. Actually, you know what? I might just literally break you into little pieces and ship you all the way to your little shitty factory you came out of, out of your knockoff Build-A-Bear looking ass. And immediately, everyone starts bursting out laughing, and Nazareth's like, I do not look like a Build-A-Bear. While she says, all right, let, let me check this, and then she immediately grabs him and teleports out while everyone's freaking out now. Oh my god, Nazareth just got kidnapped by a goth girl. Immediately, Kurumi just teleports back in and walks up towards Endeavor, who said this, and kicks him in the nuts. And immediately, he's like, no, it burns. And he's just on the ground while Kurumi just start, starts to laugh maniacally and says, no one calls me a goth chick, except for Izuku. Except for Izuku. Then she just teleports away creepily. And immediately Endeavor's like, can I get some help? While Recovery Girl's like, I ain't kissing that. While Endeavor says, please send your ambulance. While everyone just looks at him and says, no. POV change. Kurumi is currently inside Build-A-Bear Workshop. Build-A-Hair Workshop, actually. And immediately is looking around thinking, hmm, where do I want to go ahead and put this? He puts Nezu on a conveyor belt. And immediately Nezu says, this isn't going to work. And immediately all the workers see Nezu. And they're like, oh, this is another Build-A-Bear. And then they put him into a box and they're like shipping him away. Nezu just starts banging on the box. Let me out. I'm not a Build-A-Bear. And then they just look at him and was like, I didn't know that these could move. That's so cool, is what one of the workers say, while Nuts is being shipped off. And he just sees Kermi in the corner of his eyes, just laughing, and just teleporting away creepily. And he's like, damn it, I'm, how do I get out of this shit? <laughs> POV change. Currently, Izuku Midoriya is running through, blitzing all of the robots that he can find. He's using 2% on his legs. He's trying to make sure that he doesn't lose focus because he doesn't want them to explode and he doesn't want to get life alert. So, yikes. He immediately looks around and just thinks, hmm, maybe I should go for that one. He rushes towards one of the one of the slightly bigger robots, a three-pointer, and he immediately punches his right fist right into its face and it explodes. Then he bounces off the back of it and runs towards the one directly in front of it and kicks it directly into the face and it does not explode it actually just moves to the side slightly and then it grabs Izuku's face and yeets him Izuku just is in the air doing acrobatics and lands on the ground perfectly fine and then sprint bursts basically towards him towards the three-pointer and punches it directly into the chest four separate times before the three-pointer Swings its left arm all the way around full circle. And Izuku jumps in the air and just does an axe kick and its head flies off. And immediately, someone who was watching this is very impressed. She has beautiful wings and she has quite the well-endowed body. She is staring at Izuku very intently. Thinking, hmm... Maybe I should... Yeah. She starts walking closer to him. Izuku's still fighting these three-pointers that are just rushing towards him. Like, five of them are rushing towards him. He's just beating them left and right until one of them appears behind him and is swinging right downwards onto him. And Izuku can't react fast enough, and he's just looking above, and he feels like everything's flashing before his eyes. Then he realizes, well, at least I don't have to worry about the Yandere's. Before... Someone says, oh, you'll have to worry about me. And all of a sudden, a giant halberd 
just fucking slashes into the side of the damn robot. And it sees it like cut in half. And Izuku just looks in front of in front of him and sees this one beautiful lady. Immediately Izuku starts to blush, seeing how well endowed her chest is. And immediately looks upwards and sees, Oh, she looks beautiful. Before she puts her face into a twisted smile and starts laughing and says, Hi there. Would you like to to follow me to my van? And immediately Izuku's like, Not particularly. While she said, It wasn't a question. It was an order. While Izuku's like, yeah, how about a uh, no? He starts to try to run away, but she grabs the back of his leg, slams him on the ground, and immediately starts pulling him towards her while Izuku's screaming, no! While she says, I'm gonna tell you this once. I like you, and I want you. We can do it as two ways. The easy way, or the hard way. The choice ain't yours, it's mine. And starts dragging him closer. Immediately, he feels a hand right on on his chest and he gets pulled towards her immediately she's hugging him from behind and is literally on his back but Izuku's just lifting her up and just started running running around just destroying three-pointers while she also does it like that she's on his back with the halberd just swinging it behind his Iz- Izuku just covering his back while Izuku just thinks hmm actually this is a pretty good combat strategy while looking at Albedo saying this while she says oh well, yes, it is. Could you look behind you, Izuku? Well, Izuku looks behind him and immediately sees a face full of tits. Immediately gets pulled into it. And Izuku starts to starts to actually, like, literally is starting to suffocate. Because she's straight up hugging him. Her eyes are turning into hearts. And everyone around him is just like, you lucky bastard, is what all the guys are like. While one certain female is like, is he going to be okay? Is what she's thinking. And then she just ends up looking behind her and starts screaming, For justice! And starts destroying tons of robots with this little dog beside her. And she immediately has the dog eat one of her arms, and it turns into a giant fucking sword. She starts slashing left and right, destroying everything in her path. She, then she hears a zero-pointer appear. She sees, sees it in front of her. It's starting to stomp towards towards her. Then the breeze from above, when it knocked into the building beside her, starts to fall down on her. It lands on her legs, and she can't move. She's trapped, and the zero point is starting to close in. POV change. Izuku is currently still suffocating until he has the idea, maybe if I bite down. He bites down, and all of a sudden, he hears a moan. He looks upwards and says, oh, shit, that's her kink. She tries to grab him, grab him and pull him in deeper, but Izuku's like, I have one for all. What the fuck am I doing? He says that in his mind. And then he just uses one for all, 2% to push her backwards. Then he accidentally launches her a quite a white ways, and she just flies in the air and says, oh, I see you're playing hard to get. While Izuku's like, no, I'm playing not to get. And she says, hmm, clever, clever. He starts to literally use full cowling 3%, running all the way away from her. But then she, he ends up seeing that someone's stuck under debris and a zero point is getting closer. Izuku immediately thinks, hmm, I want to be a hero, so I have to do this. I'll do this to make my mom proud, my uh, dad proud, and everyone else, and all my proud. I need to go beyond. Plus, and before... He ends up saying the rest of it. He immediately hears the lady behind him, which introduced herself as Albedo, scream, Come back, sweetie. While he says, Foktra. He says, plus Foktra by accident. While everyone else is just looking at him and thinking, He just said plus Foktra out loud. Some of them are starting to burst out laughing, while one guy with blue hair is chopping his hand into the air like a robot, and says, that is unacceptable, that's horrible language to say, while Albedo says, that's what I'm about to do to you, and Izuku's like, oh hell no, he just bursts up 30% into his legs, and just jumps all the way, but then he realizes he lost focus, so his legs are just flapping in the air, 
like if it was a cape. And Izuku's looking at his legs and he says, oh, fuck, my legs are fucking noodles. And he immediately charges 3% into his left hand and says, feel the power of my quirk and feel the power of my fapping hand. He punches the robot. Immediately it explodes into little bits once it gets punched into the face, causing a shock wave throughout the entire area. He falls to the ground and is about to fall all the way down to the ground before he realizes, oh shit, if I just use one of my fingers, then I can end up, you know, getting a little landing. He uses the finger to the side and he literally crashes into a building beside the person who's covered in debris. He immediately starts crawling to the person covered in debris. Right when he's above, right, right in front of them, he looks at her and says, are you okay? She says, well, my legs are currently being crushed. Could you help me out? She looks at his face and says, well, aren't you cute? While Izuku says, uh, I don't like where this is going. Or she says, I like exactly where this is going. And Izuku says, help, help. <laughs> And immediately, Albedo appears behind him and says, I'll help. And Izuku says, not that kind of help. And starts getting dragged off by Albedo. And says, can you at least help, like, you know, you know, get the debris off this chick? While she looks at him and says, all right, fine. You owe me, though. And he just says, hey, hey, you, blue-haired Sonic. And immediately, Ida just looks at him and just says, hey, that's very offensive. And that that's also... I don't look anything like Sonic. I'm not a hedgehog. While immediately Izuku says, well, do you like to go fast? And he's like, says, I particularly like to go fast. He says, well, then could you please, uh, you know, escort me the fuck to recovery girl or somewhere? I do not want to be here for when those two get out. Could you please, please? <laughs> and immediately he says, mm, you know, it, it is a hero's job to save people. But uh, could you slide me a 20, though? And immediately he says, uh, are you going to pay me back? And he's like, yeah, sure. I'll pay you back tomorrow. Don't worry. Immediately he grabs Izuku, lifts him up, bridal style, and just starts to run, run away with him. Albedo currently lifted up the debris off of this lady and looks down at her and says, so what's your name? She says, oh, my name is Saryu. Also, this is Kuro beside me. He just sees a cute, adorable dog. While Albedo just says, hmm, well... Stay away from my man, is what she says in a, in a dark tone. While Serio says, that's my man, bitch. That is my man. I love him almost as much as my love for justice. She screams in the air before getting up. And immediately, Albedo says, weren't your legs broken? And she says, no, yours are. She says, my legs aren't broken. Before Serio starts to try to swing at her legs with a hammer left hand. After Curl just literally ate her left hand. Her hand turned into a fucking hammer and starts trying to bust them kneecaps while she says, in the words of Nora, I'm going to break them knee kneecaps. And immediately, Albedo is starting to dodge, trying not to get a broken leg while retaliating. While those two are fighting, Kurumi, who saw the entire interaction, is now thinking, now I have more competition. Well, I'm going to go ahead and go to Izuku while he's in recovery girl's office. POV change. So, Izuku gave uh, Ida 20 bucks. I mean, he's pretty cool, actually. He kind of has a stick up his ass, but hey, doesn't everyone? He's in the the bed right next to the recovery girl who's just healed his legs. He's about to fall asleep until he hears the door open. He's thinking, oh, uh, maybe they might have contacted my mom or something. He looks in front of him and sees, like, beside the curtain, one mysterious shadow. And he immediately pulls the curtains just to see Kurumi like right in front of the curtains, staring at him intensely, thinking, Hello, it's me. While Izuku says, No, it's you. And she jumps beside him and just hugs him very tightly. While Izuku's like, I can't breathe. What are you doing? Why? My lungs, my oxygen, help. He's screaming out while Recovery Girl opens the door and just sees the creepiest smile on Kurumi's face while looking at her. And she just says, Fuck this shit, I'm out. And she starts literally running out with her cane, <laughs> tripping outside of the door and just getting up and running again. 
And Yuzuku's like, help, recovery girl. And she screams back at him, no. And she's like, you're a dick, recovery girl. While Kurumi just says, so, are you going to tell me about those t three other girls? And Izuku looks at her and says, uh, how about, could you let go of me first? She says, no. Denied. And Izuku says, hey, look over there. And immediately she says, that's not going to work on me. And Izuku says, uh, well, I saved one girl from getting crushed. Another girl who literally was just really creeping me out. And there's this one girl that, like, apparently... That me and her did a bet. So if I actually, uh, like, won, she'd leave me alone. And immediately, Kermit says, what was her side of the bet? Was it the girl that kissed you on the cheek? Immediately, Izuku says, how do you know about this? And she says, I'm always watching you. And Izuku says, even when I'm in the bathroom? And then she's like, intensely. And Izuku's like, where's my rape whistle? I can't wait to get home to get that. And Izuku, immediately, Kermit just smiles. And... She immediately knows what she did. <laughs> He's, Zuku just says, all right, so how about this? Uh, I, I, Do I have to tell you? And she says, tell me or else I'm going to do something you're not going to like. And Zuku's like, I currently don't like what you're doing. She says, mm -hmm. I'll do something worse. While I spring into his ear. Immediately, Zuku just screams out, rape. While All Might just busts in through the door and says, I heard some little girl scream out rape. And then all of a sudden, All, all Might sees Izuku and says, I found the little girl. While Izuku says, I'm a guy. And then he says, I know. While immediately saying, Kermi, could you let him go? While she looks at him with a creepy smile. And All Might's like, I'm sorry, kid. You're on your own. While Izuku says, hey, All Might, All Might. Help! While well, All Might says, No, I can't, I'm a hero. I need to save those in need. He pulls Kermi off with like 50% of his goddamn strength. It took that much. 50% of one for all. The rest that he has. And he just pulled her off. And Izuku just bursts through the window. He just opens the window and jumps out of it. And just starts running away. All the way home. While All Might says, I did it! While Kermi just looks at him with a creepy smile and says, you're going to need a lot of therapy after this. While All Might starts screaming like a little girl saying, No! Not the Plus Ultra! No! And she's like, I wore high, extra high heels. They're extra sharp at the ends of them, too. And immediately, All Might is just getting stomped in the nuts. Stomp him in the nuts. Is exactly what's happening to All Might. While Recovery Girl is just in the corner, just thinking in her head, I am not healing that. And everyone in the entire UA just starts spreading rumors about the ghost, ghostly girl screams. And a POV change. Currently, Bakugo is walking home and sees Midoriya. He's thinking, maybe I should just, you know, walk beside him. Maybe treat him a little bit nicer. I mean, honestly, he, he kind of has to deal with crazy bitches anyway. Before seeing Midoriya just looking around him, just very paranoid. He's like, yeah... Actually, you know what? Fuck that. I'm better than him. And he just walks towards his house. While walking towards his house, a guy appears beside him and says, Want to smash? And he, Bakugo says, I'm a guy. And he says, I know. And then he looks behind him and sees the same guy. And he starts running and starts exploding away. While he says, You can't hide from me and my sticky gum. And he starts chasing after him while Bakugo says, did he say gum or cum? And immediately he hears a whisper behind him and looks and sees the guy says, I said both. POV change. Currently Midoriya is hearing tons and tons of screams. Mainly, mainly manly screams. Well, anorexic manly screams, it sounds like. Honestly, sounds like an anorexic hobbit, but hey. Izuku's just walking towards his house. He looks in, at the front door and sees his package on the ground, opened already. And he sees the whistle blown to bits. Izuku picks up the rest of the whistle, goes out back. He digs a little hole, puts it in there, and he immediately, you know, buries it. And says, here lies my rape whistle, my only hope, my only friend. And all of a sudden, music is playing. And then Izuku says, well, 
Time to go inside my house. He opens the door and sees Kurumi in an apron, just staring at him, and says, Do you want food, a bath, or do you want me? Before she can even finish, Izuku ran up to it, ran up to his room, closed it, locked it, put the dresser in front of it, and put pretty much everything in front of that door, and says, Whew, she won't be getting through that. The Kurumi just phases through the fucking door and all the stuff in front of it and just says, or me. And Izuku says, you know what? How about this? I'll, I, I'll let you cling. I'll let you cuddle with me while I'm sleeping. But that's as far as we go. And then she's like, oh, okay. Izuku lays down into the bed and is just about to go to sleep. Not even thinking about taking a shower right now because he he's kind of scared what she will do. And immediately feels a hug from behind and looks behind her and sees it's Kurumi. Just looks in front of her, in front of him and says, if I pretend she's not here, then everything will be okay. Then she, she immediately just hugs him more. He falls asleep. He wakes up and witnesses, witnesses her spooning him from behind. And he immediately says, I'm not okay with this. While Inko is literally just knocking on the door. And Pio, yeah, that's where I'm ending it. I hope you lo- like this. If you do, make sure you smash that like button into oblivion. Make sure you subscribe. Also, turn on your notification bell because only about 40% or so of you have subscribed and turned on your notification bell. I hope you all enjoyed.